Hey everybody, welcome to CAF World War II, the show where we talk about World War II, aviation, history, and so much more. World War II is produced by the Commemorative Air Force, the world's largest flying museum. Our mission is to educate, inspire, and honor through flight and living history experiences. The CAF began the Warbird movement more than 65 years ago. And thanks to the support of individuals like you, we continue to grow strong. We hope you enjoyed this episode. And now our host, Steve Buss. Thanks for watching and keep them flying. Good evening and welcome everyone watching tonight on Facebook and YouTube. This is episode 94 of Warbird Tube, and tonight we continue our 12 Planes of Christmas episodes. Tonight we're going to feature the mentor, the T-34 from the T-34 sponsor group. Now before we get started though, can you do us a favor? If you haven't already done so, just take a second to like, share, or subscribe, and make sure you follow us, all right? If you do subscribe on YouTube, also click the bell icon and you'll get notifications about new episodes when we post them right here on Warbird Tube. So joining me right now from the T-34 sponsor group is Lloyd Hedges. Lloyd, great to have you on the show. Good afternoon. How are you? It's good to be here. Yes. Well, tell us a little bit about the T thirty four sponsor group and uh, some of the the people who are involved. Okay. Well, the T thirty four sponsor group is a group of uh, the commemorative Air Force colonels who privately fund the uh, operation and preservation of the T thirty four Mentor six eight four nine Charlie. Uh, we supplement our funding by going to air shows and offering ride flights to the public. Usually we're following a Fifi or Ike's Bird, uh, both regionally here in Texas and uh, throughout North America if we're following Fifi around. Um, we're based at the uh, Dallas Executive Airport uh, in South Dallas. And uh, there's several of us. Uh, next picture. <laughs> Yeah, here we are, our base at uh, the Commemorative Air Force Headquarters Hangar in South Dallas. And then there are a few of our sponsors. There we go. There's Alan Benzing in the cockpit. He's a retired Delta pilot, and he's also a uh, Fifi and Diamond Lil pilot. Standing up on the wing is Sean Lucart. He's a retired American Airlines 737 pilot, and also he's a Diamond Lil co-pilot as well. This is Cody Smith. He is our in-house accountant, and he is a uh, computer IT specialist by profession. This is Kurt Lewis. He's a Delta Airlines pilot. He's also a captain on Fifi and Diamond Lil, and he flies the Stearman as well. Here he is taking Iron Maiden's Bruce Dickinson up for a flight in the T-34. Yeah, and uh, for those who don't know, uh, obviously the people know the name Iron Maiden. Uh, uh, is a, a rock group, but uh, Bruce is uh, an accomplished pilot and a big Warbird supporter, not only in uh, England, but uh, also he's a, a, a fan of the CAF and has uh, been to several events. And uh, we actually have some video footage of him uh, flying here in the T-34. You want to maybe, you say you do want to go? Take the T-34 for a rip real quick? Or what are you thinking? If, uh, yeah, I mean, if you're up for it. It's a little, I mean, it's windy. I know you can handle that, but. Uh, shame not to. <laughs> All right, everything looks good. Here we go, a little bit of a cross up on the right. Not much. Again, it sounds way meaner than it is. You know. <laughs> He's alive. Yeah. Uh, 65, give us a little rotation. All right, well, this is south. You can have it whenever you're ready. Okay, I have control. Oh, your controls. So um, right. You kind of see these two roads are paralleling. Just do that. Climb us out about 100 knots. Uh -huh. And uh, we'll go up to uh, about 2,500 feet. Okay. Okay. The area looks clear. Looks clear behind. Hang on. There you go. Just do a quick, quick clearing. Clear the six. There you go. Throw it around. Yeah. Okay. It's good for it. All right. Quick. I'll we'll try the original way and yeah, see what looking, happens there. Oh, look good. That's always a good sign, right? Yeah, yeah, maybe. 
<laughs> Get a few selfies while we climb if you don't mind. Still going up, there's the buffet. There we go, just pull it through the buffet with a little nibble on the buffet. Yeah, that's there. not going to give you much. Yeah, that's about all you're going to get for a break. Oh, there oh, it goes. Yeah, we can probably get it to break a bit more than that. There you there go. We go. I like the go. rudder too, good recovery. Forget the B24, let's put you in the steerman. <laughs> that was a nice stall recovery. I used to do um, a jet orientation course for the Air Atlanta boys oh, cool. on the 74. And it was all hand flown, no flight director, no nothing. It was like they got 12 hours so they could basically remember how to fly the airplane because they'd been in the cruise sure. above flight level 200. Yeah. And it was just brilliant fun. Executive Tower Mentor 6849, Charlie looking at a three mile initial 319. Any chance of 1600 for the break? Charlie approved as a question. Wind 010 at 16622, runway 31, clear to land. Clear to land, 31 with a right break at 1600 feet. 6849, Charlie, thank you. You heard demand? Down we there go. There you go, down we go. That's Craig Fowler, a uh, retired Air Force A-10 pilot and a retired uh, Delta Airlines pilot as well. Uh, and that's me, Lloyd Hedges. So now we've got several other pilots uh, that um, are very active, but they don't stand around and pose next to the airplane. Here's a shot of uh, Cody Smith taking a rider up for a flight at the uh, Wings Over Dallas Air Show from 2021. Okay. And that's uh, what a happy rider in the backseat of the airplane looks like. <laughs> now we take young and old boys and girls flying. Uh, this lady was well into her 80s. I think she's about 84, 85 the day we took her flying. And uh, she was really happy to go up with us. So that's when the you, uh, that's the that's the sight that you have when you're taking a ride, right? Yes, that's the uh, back seat view. Uh, great visibility out of the canopy. Here's Rocky Smith. He's one of our pilots, and he's uh, taken some grade schoolers for a little tour of the hangar and the airplane. Uh, we do a bit of outreach with both the grade school and the high school folks. Um, telling the kids about aviation and World War II and trying to give them a little education. And I think that's important uh, to note that, you know, yes, the, the sponsor group gets to fly the airplane to air shows and you get to do rides, but there's there's more to the mission than, than just flying the airplane. And that is uh, sharing the stories of World War II, or in this case, since the T-34 is post-World War II, you know, some of the uh, the things that, that came up, uh, you know, directly after uh, the war. So uh, it's really great that you've got uh, outreach going on for uh, young and old. Yeah, yeah, and it just touches our heart to see the kids here, and, you know, they're, they're so eager to learn, and naturally, we're so eager to tell them things. Good. Well, and as we're talking about pilots, um, one of the questions that often comes up in these webinars is, how do I become a pilot uh, of the T-34? What, what do I have to do? Well, we are um, always looking for additional pilots. Uh, in order to qualify to be a T-34 pilot, you've got to have at least your private pilot's license and 200 hours of experience just to uh, qualify. And then we'll walk you through the training program, uh, get you your high performance and your complex sign off, and you too can be a T-34 pilot. <laughs> Very good. And it is a, it is a pretty airplane in flight. Yeah, that's that's a great shot of uh, Kurt Lewis flying it uh, one beautiful day. And uh, that's me. Uh, we're up over near Corsicana, I believe it is, in that picture. Good. Well, we've met a number of the pilots uh, here for the uh, the T-34. We saw some uh, video footage of Bruce Dickinson taking a ride in the T-34, but we also have some other video footage that we thought we'd like to share with you uh, tonight so you get a, a better feeling for the T-34. Hey. 
That's the coolest thing I have done in a long time. Yeah. Well, let's get into uh, the reason that we're, we're talking about the T-34 tonight, and that is it's part of the 12 Planes of Christmas. And if you're familiar with that, uh, you, you know that it's our annual fundraiser to try and raise uh, some dollars to uh, help keep these airplanes flying and, and mostly uh, some very specific uh, things that uh, are uh, planned for uh, each of the airplanes. But what do you have uh, planned for the T-34? Well, our goal is to, you see the two big gauges in the very middle, the big oversized round one and then the smaller gauge right next to it. Those are the original Air Force gauges that uh, the airplane was manufactured with. Now, we replaced those, uh, those were replaced before we got the airplane with a modern equivalent, but they're old, again, that's the back seat with the two big gauges in it. Um, the gauges we have are old vacuum driven gyroscopic gauges and they're simply worn out or wearing out. So we would like to replace them with Garmin GI 275 electronic instruments. Now you see here in this picture underneath the big radio that's now in the middle of the dashboard where those gauges used to be just underneath there, you'll see the little artificial horizon. Uh, to the left and the directional gyro to the right. Those are the gyroscopic gauges that are simply worn out and the cost of replacement, it's cheaper to go with the digital ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, there's the uh, artificial horizon. And yeah. uh, we've got a, a little video clip that uh, will kind of show, it, it, it looks normal in this picture, but in this video clip, you'll, you'll see what it actually does uh, when it's in flight. Well, as you can see, the uh, it is not performing <laughs> as it's supposed to. So you're right; it is uh, it is time for a replacement. And and this is the the new what you're hoping to be able to raise money to uh, put inside the airplane. Right. These are the Garmin GI 275s. They're great all encompassing gauges. As you can see, they produce a lot of data. Uh, but you can select what data you want on there. You don't have to put all of this data on the gauge. You can kind of simple it out just to make it more user-friendly and not as much clutter. But uh, they're great gauges. We really want to thank our friends at Garmin for allowing us to uh, mention their name and use their pictures as well. Great we help go. from Garmin. And it is uh, top of the line uh, equipment. It is the uh, cutting edge, latest technology. And really, uh, you know, if you're going to, to go through the trouble of, of taking the airplane down and putting in uh, new gauges or instruments, it's probably best to, to uh, put the, the best you can afford in there. Yeah, these are really good. Um, it's, it is the latest cutting edge thing from Garmin. And here's a uh, mock-up. Kurt Lewis did this for us of what the, these two gauges will look like in the uh, front cockpit of the T-34. Very nice. And that's the attitude indicator. Um, you see on the left, you've got an airspeed in the middle, and then on the right in the middle, you've got an altitude readout and a whole bunch of other data on there as well. It's, it's, it's bordering on an electronic cockpit like the airliners have. There you go. And then this is the DG directional gyro. Uh, set up here is an HSI, horizontal situational indicator, with your nav uh, gauge overlaid your compass gauge. The nav part's the green line in the middle and the compass card is the backing. Right. Now here are logos um, and we make stickers out of these logos. For our friends that wish to donate to the uh, cause for a mere $25 donation, we'll send you some stickers that look just like this. You can put them on your car, you can put them on your luggage, you can put them on your own airplane maybe. Uh, but for just 25 bucks, you get some free stickers from us. There you go. Now for an additional, for a total of a $250 donation, we'll send you one of our T-34 logo hats plus the stickers. There you go. And? The granddaddy of them all, for a $500 donation, you'll get the stickers, the hat, and this golden yellow t-shirt. 
Uh, if you wear the gold and yellow t-shirt to one of the events where we're offering ride flights, you'll get a free ride in the airplane. <laughs> there you go. And uh, hopefully you'll you'll be able to see those uh, new instruments already in the uh, in the dash. We hope to get those put in either in April of okay. 2023 or depending upon mechanic availability, maybe later in the summer. Okay. Uh, there's always a bit of a bottleneck with the mechanics availability. Right. And of course, this is if uh, someone needs more information. Yeah, if you want to do more than just uh, be part of the 12 Planes of Christmas program, if you want to sponsor the airplane, if you want to become a pilot for us, uh, this is my personal email, lloydthepilot at gmail.com. Drop me an email. I'll get back with you with whatever information that you're requesting that I can provide. Very good. Tell us a little bit about what it's like to, to fly this airplane. I mean, it, it, as we said, it's it's post World War II, but it's still a, it's a, still an older an older aircraft. This airplane was manufactured in 1954. It was the 111th T-34 manufactured. Um, it's it's not a rocket ship, but it's a very stable trainer for an air, airplane. Uh, great visibility, great maneuverability. It goes where you put it, and uh, it's. It's not easy to fly until you get used to its mannerisms, and then it is just an extension of you, really. Really? What What are some of the, the things that the pilots need to get used to flying the 34? Uh, seat height is very important. If you've got the wrong sight picture, you'll never be able to hold straight and level. And then trim. Uh, you've got to get the airplane trimmed up in all three axes, and then it'll fly almost hands off. If you don't get the trim set right, you'll be fighting it every moment. And this was used as a, a, a trainer uh, by the uh, armed forces in the 50s and uh, beyond, I guess. Yeah, the uh, Air Force was the first customer to purchase some from Beechcraft, and the Air Force models are the A models. And this RT-34, 49 Charlie, is an A model. Uh, it was manufactured in 54. The airplane was first designed in the late 40s. They held some competitions with a Fairchild and a Swift product, and the Air Force eventually settled on the Beechcraft product. Uh, our plane was originally based in Georgia. Uh, it took fresh 20-year-old Air Force recruits and offered them initial pilot training. After a couple years doing that in Georgia, it moved bases to northwest Florida, really only a few miles from its Georgia base, mm -hmm. and continued as a uh, primary trainer. It eventually wound up in New Mexico um, as a trainer, and then it went into the uh, flying club, uh, the Air Force Flying Club. So if you weren't a pilot, but you were some other Air Force member, you could take flying lessons in the T-34, which was the same airplane that uh, the Air Force was using for their pilot candidates. Sure. The Navy model is the B model, and it was kind of the second generation. The Navy flew the B models a lot longer than the Air Force did. And in the mid-70s, the Navy and Beechcraft co-developed the C model with a uh, Turbo, turboprop engine in it, and they flew that thing up until 10 years ago. Okay. So a real testament to the quality and just great trainer that the T-34 is. Of course, and you mentioned Beechcraft. They're most famous for the Bonanza series, which uh, kind of has a shared lineage with the uh, T-34 as well. Right. Yeah, they used the Bonanza kind of as the starting point for the T-34, uh, it was a post-war design, um, mo modern compared to pre-war and existing war designs. So it does. It, it's a cousin to a beach bonanza. A lot of people think it is nothing but a beach bonanza, but it's a little bit more than a beach bonanza. That's very apparent when you're trying to repair it. Uh, <laughs> you cannot put beach bonanza parts on this airplane. They either don't fit or the paperwork just isn't right on them. If someone has uh, a good deal of uh, Bonanza time, is it an easy transition to the T-34 or do you have to forget some things and learn new things on the on the 34? Both. Okay. Um, 
Bonanza, you know, it does behave very similar to a Bonanza, but because of the uh, front and back cockpit design and it's, it's in the stick instead of the yoke, it is a little bit different from a Bonanza, but it is very similar as well. Okay. So you mentioned uh, that you've been out uh, touring, you know, the, this past year uh, with the with Fifi and the uh, Air Power Heritage Tour. Do you have any plans for 2023 already or are, are there still in the works? Um, the, the first plans for 2023, Fifi, the Air Power History Tour is heading to Florida at the end of February. We've got a date in Mississippi. We've got a date in Georgia. And then we start into Florida, start in Tallahassee, go to Tampa, go to Sarasota, go over to the Miami area, up to the Daytona Beach area, and then over to Pensacola. And we're going to be flying. We're going to be enjoying the nice warm spring weather down in Florida. Uh, and we hope to share the T-34 experiences with as many people as we can while we're down there. Good. And to find out where uh, the T-34 will be with the Air Power uh, Tour, you should go to the Air Power Her uh, Her Heritage to Tour site to, to uh, get the list of aircraft and the different tour stops, correct? Right. Yeah. On the Air Power History Tour site, it's got all of the dates and cities that we're going to. And if you want to pre-book a ride in the airplane, uh, that is capable on their website as well. Well, with the airplane spending uh, a good portion of its its military life in the South. It's uh, only fitting that it, it spends uh, some time touring in Florida and uh, throughout Georgia and the, and the Southeast uh, this this uh, this year. So uh, will you be on any of those uh, tours? I will be doing the flying in February through, okay. uh, we go, I'll be doing Jackson, Mississippi, uh, the Georgia stop, the Tallahassee, Florida, the Tampa and the Sarasota. And then uh, Craig Fowler will pick it up uh, in Opelika and mm -hmm. take it uh, back through North Florida, Pensacola, uh, Shreveport, and back home to Dallas in uh, March. Okay, sounds good. Well, uh, again, the, the reason for talking about the airplane today is uh, the uh, 12 planes of Christmas, trying to raise some funding so you can uh, put some new instruments uh, in, the, in the airplane. And, and go ahead and tell us again about the, some of the, uh, the gifts that you have for uh, your donors. Okay, well, if you want to donate as little as $25, we'll send you a couple of our logo stickers. This is both the new and the old logo stickers. Uh, that's the starting donation. Then uh, for $250, you get the logo stickers and one of our T-34 logo hats, like you see here in the picture. And then if you go for the $500 donation, you get the stickers, the hat, and the golden yellow T-34 sponsor group t-shirt. If you wear the t-shirt to one of our ride flight events, you get a free ride in the airplane. Well, uh, Lloyd, any final thoughts before we uh, wrap things up? I just really want to thank everybody that's participating in this. And even if you don't participate monetarily, I just want to thank you for your interest in the T-34. We're happy to share the airplane with you. Hope to see you somewhere where we're giving some ride flights. If you don't want to go flying, we're happy to just to sit, stand around and talk about it with you. Excellent. Excellent. And again, go to the uh, 12 Planes of Christmas uh, website. You can make a donation to the T-34 or any of the other aircraft or to the uh, Aircraft Restoration Fund, which also helps uh, fund other uh, projects that are not necessarily part of the 12 Planes of Christmas, but it's it's all there at uh, the 12 Planes of Christmas website. Lloyd, thank you very much for, uh, for joining us again. And uh, your email address, if someone would like more information about the T-34 or getting more involved. Lloyd, the pilot at gmail.com. All uh, one word. Excellent. That'll wrap up this uh, edition of the CAF Warbird Tube. If you have any ideas for future topics, please send Leah Block an email and uh, let her know at uh, media at cafhq.org. Until next time, I'm Steve Buss. Thanks for watching CAF Warbird Tube.